Okay, just going to show you very briefly how to use the um, the mechanical lithotripter. This we we use the Olympus uh, Lithocrush uh, V. Um, there are different versions that, that um, do need to be assembled in very different ways. So, um, just going to show you some of the absolute fundamentals of this. So this is the mechanical lithotripter. Um, uh, this is and this is this is single use and the handle is uh, is multi-use also made by uh, Olympus now it is possible to uh, put this together uh, completely incorrectly such that the whole thing falls to pieces when you actually use it the first thing to say is that um, on the handle you need to be sure that um, the the lock is completely unlocked so that's anti-clockwise torque okay you then um, you can see here on the lithotripter itself that the the basket opens and closes by uh, the uh, the metal um, internal sheath moving backwards and forwards okay so the first thing you want to do is to pull this back maximally so that the metal hub is against the plastic catheter and you can see the black marker here now the important thing now is to with the uh the the uh the lock unlocked and then this is depressed this is pushed in you now pass this right to the back and then release the lock and then lock it okay lock it nice and tight and then give it a little tug which confirms that it is locked at the, the the back here if you don't do that and a mistake that people make is that they do they they the the, the tip of the catheter is not secured in this lock and then this is uh, connected too early but we're happy that that is now locked in there and so we then uh, 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 lock the uh, lithotripter into the, the handle okay and now as you can see when I uh, uh, push the ratchet in the basket opens and then uh, closes okay and at this point we have the ratchet in the off position okay the ratchet is in the off position now in the uh, the example of the case you will see, you will see that the process is that one engages a stone in the basket and then we close the uh, the plastic sheath onto the stone but of course the plastic sheath will not um, crush the stone. It is the metal sheath that we see here that crushes the stone. So we need to advance this metal sheath and we do this uh, by releasing uh, gently this, uh, this cap. Um, not too much, otherwise it comes off in your hand, although you can re-secure it. And then we advance this sheath and you can see that as we do this the sheath is advancing up to the basket so we advance this sheath up to that point and then we lock it here and then we just lightly tighten it there that is now locked and then uh, we will be in a position to uh, perform lithotripsy and crush the stone to do that we need to turn the ratchet to the on position like that and now we can crush this stone. And as we do that, you can hear the ratchet uh, moving on and you can see that if there's a stone within that, the metal sheath against the basket will crush the stone. Okay. When you've crushed the stone, this is then all quite stiff. So if one wants to then take the lithotriptor out of the duct, then we usually release the ratchet, which then takes some of the tension out of the system. And then you can obviously take that out of the duct. Ordinarily, because there will then be 
uh, within the, the, the basket, there will be a lot of stone debris that's a bit sticky. Um, ordinarily, we take the lithotripsa entirely out of the patient and out of the duodenoscope. We open it up, we give it a wash. Um, we come back with the metal sheath like this and then we can uh, um, uh, and then we can start the process all over again and we can reinsert this back down the duodenoscope and into the patient's bowel duct. Okay so mechanical lithotripto is a very useful bit of kit but one has to fully understand exactly how to put it together and exactly how to deploy it around a stone and crush the stone.